After being criminalized for decades, research and clinical trials for promising psychedelic therapies are now well underway. Mental health disorders are on the rise globally, and psychedelic therapies hold the promise of advancements in a field that has experienced very little progress. Patrick and Amy, you're both coming at the psychedelics industry from a different standpoint. Patrick doing some great research around the potential for this long term. And Amy, from Seidman's perspective, building clinical trials and everything around putting the science together to make this something that we can all look forward to consuming one day. And there's the promise of transforming the way therapeutics happen as well, where people are hooked on a lot of drugs to treat some of these conditions like depression or anxiety or PTSD. And, and people are ending up with a lifetime of treatment around it. And there's a promise with what is being developed at Cybin, Amy, that could really shorten this or even resolve some of these conditions rather than having people permanently dependent on drugs. But Patrick, that changes the business model potentially for the pharmaceutical industry. How do you think they're looking at it today? Yeah, I think it's a, that's also, I think, really interesting because I think for some patients, that is gonna be the case. It is gonna be the case where hopefully they can go in and have a few psychedelic therapy sessions and maybe never need treatment for the rest of their lives. And I think, you know, we've seen that. We've seen that in alcohol use disorder. There are other examples where that's occurred. Right. I think, though, there's also going to be people who do need to go back. Uh, is it going to be every six months? Is it going to be every year? But it's not going to be needing to take something every day. It's also not going to be needing to maybe go in every week. It's going to be a longer period of time. And I think as we kind of develop improved psychedelics, I think we are going to see, hopefully, extension of that durability of effect. Well, and on yeah. efficacy, Amy, you talk a lot about that. One of the critical facts is that we want durable drugs. We want to minimize the amount of time people really have to spend in a clinical setting. It's a burden upon people to have to return, say, every two to three weeks for a treatment as shown in the ketamine industry with that therapeutic model. What we're hoping for is to have these durable molecules where you could go in and have your first treatment and then maybe a, a second treatment follow up and then nothing for six months. But we have to show this durability. So although we can have our clinical trials running, we need to have these endpoints where we can say, yes, look, this is how it's performing. And this makes our clinical trials longer than, say, something where you're measuring an endpoint after a week or a day. So, Amy, when you talk about molecules and the design of new molecules, which is a big part of what Simon is doing, innovating in this space, what does that look like? So we're taking known psychedelic molecules, but we can make them better by tweaking them at that chemical level. And effectively, just small changes that you could make to the conformation of these molecules can have really pronounced effects. It could be that we have a faster onset of action. We can have longer lasting molecules. This is really exciting because we're understanding the science behind these molecules as well. Both the FDA and as well as the insurance companies, they're looking at that. They're looking, how often do these drugs need to be administered? How safe are they? How long is the patient in remission? And the insurance companies are very keen actually to see treatments that do have a long duration. So if they know, okay, I, we know that this patient is, you know, three or four of the treatments haven't worked, we're gonna go with a psilocybin or a psilocybin-like therapy, and they're gonna be in remission maybe for six months, maybe for years, they're gonna be more likely to pay for that. Get it through the FDA approval process, get the insurance companies to cover it, and then hopefully it's accessible to everyone. And I also think that getting people so that they're able to contribute to society, and you can't put a price on that, and having people so that they can have an improved quality of life I think that these things are so essential and increased dialogues around mental health, just being more open now. Yeah, about, coming to the forefront, yeah. really. And I think that people acknowledge that there needs to be a shakeup of how mental health conditions are treated. It's not one size fits all. I think it's a big difference between what was done, you know, many decades ago with psychedelics versus what's being done today. So what was done decades ago was just taking these generic compounds from nature, researching them, figuring out what's going on. Today, I think we're actually are improving on them, improving the pharmacology, looking at how can we actually tweak this experience. Yeah, engineering the molecules. Engineering, exactly. And taking kind of a, a more scientific approach to how is it that we can 
maybe improve them. It'll make it so that there could be better intellectual property protection. The FDA, I'm sure, is going to be taking a look at some of these novel kind of compounds and approaches, and that will kind of hopefully lead to even more research being done. Uh -huh.